G'day guys, I'm Joe Train, and welcome back to another Scrap Mechanic video. And this is going to be a, another tutorial video, um, but I've said I'm going to do a tutorial on uh, my elevator. And this is the elevator that I use in my train station, High and Seek Challenge, and that I'm also using in my currently in process airport High and Seek Challenge. Basically, since I've been doing a lot of tutorials, I've decided, you know what, I'll do one on how to do the elevator as well. And I also got um, on the Discord, I got a message from Mindful Block, and he's basically saying, "Oh, is, is all this um, necessary? Because it looks too complicated." And, I mean, yeah, if it, when you look at it, like it's all compact, it does look very complicated. Even when I tried to color code it and make it all spread out like this, but if you get the connection tool, it still looks very complicated. I'll do it like step by step process on how to build the elevator. Well, let's demonstrate how this works first. Um, so you have there's basically like three memory bits, um, some tick generators here and some other logic gates so these this red memory bit here this basically this controls the piston of the elevator with the big red one here so it just controls it up and down the blue one this controls uh, if it's active so basically what that means is like if you press a button and then it's the doors close start closing so that's like the active state of it and then the these uh yellow ones uh this is like tells you what direction the elevator is going in so if it's going up or down which are demonstrated by these logic gates they light up to tell you which direction the elevator will be going so even like when the elevator stops it'll still tell you okay so the elevator's going to come down when the doors close all right so let's just get straight start building it um i just built it over here i guess we could just build on the ground and then this is going to be like a little this is um so I'll search up the terms here. So this is like the elevator car is like the thing that rises up and down. And then I don't know which direction we want it. I guess this is the front here, so I get it. And then we'll just do this. I, I like, I make the floor out of this diamond metal block. So you like, you know that this is going to be something to walk on. And then this caution block can be like the way the door is going to be there. And then, um, what's the... Uh, this for the pistons so there's a lot of like setting before you even think about it before you even think about doing any logic you gotta there's a lot of setting up you have to do here and we'll put a, a four block gap in between so that's going to be the doors for this elevator here and i'm just going to make sure that it it work it's not attached to the wrong thing all right and then we're going to need another set of doors and then these doors are going to be the landing doors so this is the uh, landing doors for the bottom here. And the door, I don't know, I made the doors really tall for whatever reason, but whatever. Like that, we'll put a button like here. Uh, so we're gonna have a button to bring the elevator down if it's like the up position. And then we need a, a logic gate. And I'm re the reason I'm using a logic gate, this is just to display uh, which direction the elevator is going or if the elevators are, are going to move, go downwards. And so I, do, I use a logic gate because it, like, it has an arrow on it. So it like shows you the direction it's going, I guess, with the arrow there. And then we'll just do the inside of here. And then we want another button here. And then we'll have two more logic gates, uh, one facing down. And then another one facing upwards. And then I'll just use the switch to just bring us to the up position. Now I'm using the challenge mode pistons just so we can get to a higher range of um, a position, I guess. And I think it looks better than just having a dinky old little small piston as, as like the whole elevator, or the whole thing just putting the elevator on a dinky little piston. Um, so that's, that's at the up position now. And we can just do another platform. And then we'll do another uh, button here and then a down face or no up facing lights here and then a uh what we want uh doors yeah that's right we want some doors on this side all right so that's that should be all the mechanisms uh, that are important all the rest are just for like um just for aesthetics i guess and i, I paint the doors because they're kind of matching like the same color as the walls 
I, I kind of build like right at the edge here. I, I'll just like expand this. All right, so we'll start uh, the. F uh, we'll just put our memory bits. We'll put it here. So to make a memory bit, um, basically, Khan does a video about like the basics of logics. If you want to watch that, but it basically stores um, information. So if you just hire it like this, um, like that, and then we want to set these bottom two the NOR gates, and you see the how it's in that pulsing state. Um, so the way we fix that, uh, we set that one to all. That one doesn't do anything. Uh, we can set this to an AND and then have it so if these two logic gates are active then it's going to activate this one and then that stops that pulsing state. It's actually kind of well timed that when that happened but yeah so um and that and that's how we know that this left one is the default state and this is the active state I guess of the memory bit and basically the whole idea of a memory bit it turns a button um press into a a switch or like it turns it into an on or off kind of Thing, but it lets you do uh, more stuff with it. Anyway, so we'll have this one next to the piston. We'll just set this one to red for now. Um, and then we put this in here. Oh wow, yeah. let's just turn that down, that's a bit too far. And then this this red thing, memory bit, just controls uh, if the piston's up, uh, if the piston's activated or not. So that's what that controls. So that's, that's the first basic memory bit done. I'll do another one, I guess, like on the here, on the side here. The blue one. And this one basically um oh hang on, I forgot, I forgot something else uh that, that's important for this. Uh, we need to have uh sensors to detect when which position the elevator's in, like this in the bottom or the top. So let's actually do that before. And then I'll just do a thing like this. Uh, sensor up here and then we'll bring this back down. All right, so the next step uh, We want to have these sensors do something. So we, what we want to do we want to make a, a tick converter um, And so to make do that we basically just get a, a Logic gate here. This is the, just to wire the sensors in and we get some timers as well I'll just move this one out the way so you can tell like where I'm wiring everything so we have, this one's going to be an XOR gate, and so we want to connect uh, this to the timer and the XOR gate, or not the yeah, XOR gate, and then, so once it's active, you see it, it makes a tick pulse, and I'll put this like on a 5 millisecond. Anyway, so that that's, sends a tick through that, and but you notice when we let go, it also uh, does another tick, so we want to just have it connected to this uh, AND gate, and then the XOR gate connect to the AND gate. And then that stops that second take from happening. And I'll just color paint the screen because I did that on the other other one as well. And then this XOR gate is going to be connected to memory bit here. It's going to deactivate this memory bit. So we can just, uh, I'll just connect these sensors to this one down here as well. So, I mean, this is going to deactivate this. Let's just put this in here, right? And so like, if we press this button inside, it's gonna move the elevator and then hang on. Oh, this is supposed to be an OR gate. There we go. Okay. And so, and then that deactivates us. All right. So the next thing you want to do, you want to make a another a tick generator for this blue one here. And I'll just do it here. So it just I'll make it more compact this time, like that. And then we'll do this. Connect this to this, and make this an XOR gate. And then this is tick generator is going to be attached to this one. I want to paint it blue. We want this to be in a timer, and then the timer is going to. So we want this to be in a timer. And then the timer is going to be connected to these two logic gates here, and then we want to have this one sensor to this bottom one, and the other sensor to this top one, and then if we want uh, this one to be on this one. This logic gate and the red memory bit, and then the other one to be in the other one, I think. Oh, we need to put this out. Like, there we go. So that worked. And what this timer does, oh, it basically delays when the elevator is going to start moving. So we can do press this, and it's going to put a five second delay, and then it'll start moving downwards. 
and basically this gives enough time um, for the doors to close. So let's actually do the doors now. Oh, I, I, I don't know where, I'll just do it here, I guess. I'll just color code the doors like before. Just like in my logo colors, if you couldn't tell. Red, blue, yellow. Um, and then we want to have so the red ones. And we want to um, have the default um, position is going to be uh, when it's closed, right? Um, and I'm using our controllers just to move the doors because they're a lot slower than using the uh, like directly connected to the pistons. And so it's a more, lot more realistic doing it this way because it's supposed to be like a realistic ele elevated and scram mechanic. So these are the last ones as well. I could, probably could have just did this over here, but whatever, it's over here now. Because um, I'm going to have to wire stuff from here to here. It's going to be annoying, but whatever. Uh, we we'll just want these, this one to here, this one to here, um, red. Yeah, red. Gonna be connected to this logic gate and here, and so that will open this up. And then the blue one is gonna be this top one here, and to that logic gate, which is obviously not gonna be um, open because the sensor here is not active, so which means the, the elevator car is not in that position. And then the yellow one can just be directly connected to this, this here because it's gonna be open on either floor, right? Okay, so that's that's that done, and now um, we should have like a functioning elevator at least in terms of this one button here. So the both the doors close, and then for five seconds it will move upwards, and and then it will get to here. All right, and then we can go down as well, and using the same um, pressing the same button here. So we just press that, and then we'll go downwards, and then open up. So that's just using, you just have like a single button to move that elevator to go up and down. And it only took all this logic here. <laughs> it only took all this logic just to do that. But we're not done yet. We got still some more to do. All right, so the next thing uh, we want to do, we want to have these buttons actually do something. So we just have it here. And I'll color code it like I did before. So this is going to be white. And then the top one is going to be black. And then we want to have so white on this side, black on this side. And then we have this white one into this logic, into this logic gate. Black one to this logic gate. And we also want the sensors to be in the logic gate as well. So the bomb sensor is going to be in the black logic gate. The top sensor is going to be in the white logic gate. And then we can connect the logic gates into these, this logic gate here, into the memory bit. If we press this here, um, it'll, it'll move upwards. Give it five seconds. Probably move, just have it four seconds so it's not, it doesn't take us long. And we press this bottom one here, the doors close, and then we'll move downward. So that that's how that works. Um, and there's also a funny thing you can do. Um, so if you just, if you disconnect these logic gates, it'll just basically just make the elevator constantly go up and down. Because it's like, it's like if the button's always being pressed, right? And yeah, it's just going up and down. Um, well, we don't want it like that. So that's basically the elevator functioning, and then we just want these uh, light displays to, be, to work as well. And so that's where we need our last memory bit. So this is the, the yellow one. Right, and then we need to have uh, two more loaded gates here. Oh, I would just paint it grey. Um, so they're going to be connected to both of these here and then this is connected to this one, this is connected to this one and then we want uh, the sensors so we want uh, the bottom sensor to be in the right one the top sensor to be in the left one uh, and then we need two, we want two more logic gates so I guess we'll just put them here uh, so this is going to be so we want this one in this left one, this one the right one the left one's actually going to be black, and the right one's going to be white. I did that the wrong way around. And then we want this other logic gate here, um, in the activate memory bit, but on the other side. So that's going to be connected to these two. And then, uh, so the white one we put in the white one, and then the black one we put in the black one. 
And then we can do the ones inside as well here. Oh, that's like that. All right, and I and hopefully I got this correct. So if it's going the elevator, and we press the button, you can see the lights activated. The lights activated to show which direction the elevator is going to move in. Then once we get to the floor, um, it turns off, and then um, and let's just hop down here, and then we can we'll press this one here, and see the light activates to let the user know that the elevator is going to be coming down. And so the elevator comes down, and there you go. So that's very simple. Um, I, well, it's all simple, but it's like it's that's how to make a, a two-story a realistic elevator. I'll actually show you a bonus tip as well actually. So if you want to have an elevator with two doors, like uh, like this elevator here that I use in my uh, hot airport I'm working on. Let's just hop in here. So if you want an elevator with two doors, it's, gonna, it's a very slow elevator, this one, because it's like realistic. Um, it's actually easier than doing it with um, only well, four doors instead of it, it's actually easier than doing it with um, three doors with like two landing doors and then the one carriage door because um, all you have to do is uh, let me just I'll just like really quickly do another set of doors in here watch it there you go this this can be a door this and then that's gonna be so all you want this is basically um, going to be attached to the blue logic gate. Oh, hang on, I gotta upgrade it. Um, the blue can. Sorry, I said the blue logic gate. The blue controller uh, set this to two, and then this yellow one. We'll just get rid of that. Is going to be set in the red uh, controller. Oh, I gotta upgrade this as well. So there you go. Um. So the, see that blue one is open, but if we go down, see both, you notice both of these doors close, then it comes down, and then both these doors open. So it's actually easier um, building a uh, two uh, door or two side door elevator than building the one door side elevator. And then, and then, obviously, you want you want this blue door to be on the other side here, but you get you get how it works, right? I don't have to re. Hopefully, you can you figure it out. Anyways, uh, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Uh, if you want to suggest other tutorials uh, you want me to make, uh, if you if you found this tutorial useful, um, if and if it thought I if I made this whole complicated thing more simple, um, to understand, uh, let let me know if you if you found it. Useful and you're able to under understand um, me going step by step into all this logic gate, all this stuff here. Um, anyways, uh, feel like and subscribe, and lastly, be sure to join the journey with the ghost.